Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There it is, so you don't miss any of our football content this season. It has been, if I might say, fantastic. Football season's here. There's only one place to go for tickets, and that is Game Time. You know I love Game Time. They have a new feature called Game Time Picks. Makes getting tickets for your favorite live events easier. It filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. You want to go to a football game or a concert? Just click on the event you want to attend, and Game Time gives you a seat preview and offers you the super deal. So I get the best bang for my buck, and that's what I'm looking for. Game Time also has the lowest price guarantee, or they'll credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, right? Download the Game Time app. Doesn't take long. Create an account. Use my code, the redeem code, Colin, C O L I N, for $20 off your first purchase. C O L I N. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. All right. Little instant reaction on the Cowboys. 2015 win. God, that was ugly. Dallas had 11 penalties. You know, I want to start with the New York Giants because um, if I said there's a team in the state of New York, Brian Dable's on the offensive side, Singletary's one of the running backs, good left tackle, serviceable O-line, one great weapon, really strong defensive front. No, that's not the Buffalo Bills. That's the Giants. And if you gave Josh Allen to the Giants, we would talk about them in the Super Bowl bubble. The Giants have a lot of components that Super Bowl teams have outside of quarterback. They need to draft a running back. They need more juice in the backfield, which the Bills did for years until they drafted James Cook. They had Devin Singletary, who who just doesn't, doesn't have a lot of breakaway speed. But for years, you know, once they got Stephon Diggs, it was good defensive front, capable coach, Dable in the room, Singletary at back. Good left tackle, serviceable O-line, excellent defensive front, one great weapon. So I don't think the Giants are hopeless. They just, Brian Dable is coaching his butt off. I mean, Daniel Jones tonight, they dominate time of possession with no run game. And an average quarterback, below average. <laughs> they literally dominate time of possession. Um Daniel Jones goes 29 of 40 until the very end. Didn't have an interception, no touchdowns. He's not throwing interceptions anymore. And and they go against Dallas and with, with no deep down the field threat. He, they're getting the ball to neighbors. He had 12 catches. But the Giants with no run game and a mediocre quarterback dominate time of possession. Against Dak Prescott, pretty good quarterback. And Mike McCarthy, a Super Bowl winning coach. I think Dable is, you know, he would never win like, even honorable mention coach of the year, but because their record won't be good. Um, but it's not like the Giants are hopeless. They're just hopeless at quarterback. And so that's where a, an owner interfered and a general manager and a coach are doing the best they can, but they're a little bit trapped because, you know, they're going to have dead cap money if they move off Daniel Jones. Um, he is serviceable now. He could certainly on the market, somebody would come after him. He's serviceable. He probably wouldn't be good elsewhere because he wouldn't have neighbors and he wouldn't have Dable. Um, but there's there's pieces of the Giants that Super Bowl teams have. Really good defensively up front, above average left tackle, great weapon, Dable on the offensive side, if they had the quarterback right. So, in, in, so people look at the Giants and think they're hopeless. If it was a great quarterback class, this is a six-win team, five-win team, you'd get one of them. It's not. You know, there's a couple of guys, even the Georgia quarterback now with Georgia's O-line beat up looks pretty average, right? Like against Kentucky, couldn't move the ball. Uh, Quinn Ewers may be at number one. Cam Ward, I like those two. Shooter Sanders worries me a little. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I wish he would be a little more chill, but he can play. So you'll probably have three or four quarterbacks in the first round. They probably have to draft one. If I was a Giants, I would draft one uh, because I don't think they have a ton of needs. You can get running backs. I was just talking to a general manager last night. History tells you, analytics tell you, the running backs, you can get your running backs third, fourth, fifth, sixth rounds. Don't draft them in the first two rounds unless you get like a Saquon or an Adrian Peterson or a Zeke. You know, you don't need to. Um, so it's, you know, Giants will draft a quarterback. They considered it this year. And, you know, if the kids... You know, the offensive line now is more than capable, but Brian Dable's excellent. 
He's doing a great job to dominate time of possession. And until the end, again, Daniel Jones didn't have an interception, more than capable. I mean, the guy threw for, you know, 200 and some 75, 280 yards um, with really no deep balls and no run game. They just got to get the quarterback right. And, and again, Quinn Ewers is an NFL quarterback. Shadur Sanders is back from Georgia. Uh, and Cam Ward. So you're going to have four first-round quarterbacks. I think Riley Leonard, late first, second. He's a little wild. Um, you know, great athlete, big size, not not great in the accuracy. Can you teach him to do that? You know, NFL people probably could. Josh Allen was wild. Uh, people still like Anthony Richardson, and he is 49% completion percentage. So I know you think that the the Giants, I know J-Mac probably thinks all is lost with the Giants. They just got to get the quarterback right. Dable. Left tackle, neighbors, good defensive front. They got pieces. <laughs> they got pieces. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, meanwhile, <laughs> what was it, 11 penalties? Jesus, if you took C.D. Lamb out of this team, there is nothing there. I mean, there's just and, – and, well, their fullback is like a weapon. Um, You know, I like their field goal kicker. He missed one at the end. Damn it. But, you know, neither team really had a run game tonight. Um, I, I, I just think, you know, again, let's talk about this. Oh, if the New York Giants hit on a quarterback next year, let's say um, the Patriots aren't going to draft a quarterback because they have Drake May. Um, Carolina probably would, right? Um, uh, Tennessee, if they're bad, probably would, although I think they figure out a way to win four or five, six games. But a lot of the bad teams have their quarterbacks, right? They're going to give them a shot. So the, the Giants win five games. You know, they're not going to beat Dallas. Five or six wins. They'll probably have the fifth, sixth pick. And a lot of the bad teams just got their quarterback. So they're going to get one of these quarterbacks. I like their future. I like Dable more than Mike McCarthy. I like the Giants defensive line more than Dallas. I like their left tackle more than Dallas. They both have good weapons. Owner, I'll take the Giants, I guess. The Giants just need a quarterback and pick up a running back in the fourth or fifth round. They've got a lot of components. Dallas is kind of trapped. They're paying CD a fortune. They'll pay Micah, who I like, I don't love, a fortune. Um, they're paying Dak a fortune. Owner, Vane, uh, more about you know getting attention than and being remarkably interesting and talked about uh, more than I think really winning titles, despite what he says. Um, their offensive line is just okay. No juice in the backfield. Average at tight end. Very C.D. Lamb. And he's great, but very C.D. Lamb-centric. I, I don't see this great future. And they're stuck with Dak, who's good, B+. Plus. It's, it's like having Kirk Cousins in his prime. It's good, B+. Plus. We wouldn't get to the playoffs. But if the Giants next year, let's say... They have the fourth pick in the draft. And, you know, Travis Hunter from Colorado goes number one. Uh, and let's say somebody likes Cam Ward. He goes two, and the Giants move up a spot, give up some draft picks, and they get Quinn Ewers, and he's good. And Brian Dable is really good with quarterbacks. He's made Daniel Jones, now that he has one weapon and a more serviceable O-line, capable. Not special, capable. So it's like, who who would have the better future if you got Quinn Ewers or Beck and you established pretty quickly, guy can play, a little bumpy for sure, guy can play. Whose future do you like? Neighbors, Dable, Weapons, you can get a running back every year, just trap them. They're out there. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's I know Dallas dominates this series, and I know everybody thinks, you know, ooh, Dallas, Dak, say, you know, the star in the helmet is – very influential, but you know, you're stuck with McCarthy at least for the rest of this year. 11 penalties, he's always been penalty plagued. Um, I mean, tonight Mike is hurt, Demarcus Lawrence banged up. I don't know, maybe I'm being just overly negative. I Laker fans feel the same way, but this I said this today on FS1, you know, family owned and operated just felt better 20 years ago. I think now is you can have a deli like that, but I, in tech. I don't want a family owned and operated tech giant. I, I, you know, I mean, maybe that's what Larry Ellison has with Oracle. Uh, maybe that's it. But by and large, I, I, I like the Stan Kroenke, 
uh, of the world. I, I like, you know, the Allen family in Seattle, York family in San Francisco. I, I big money, um, something beyond just the team. I, I, I don't think Dallas's future is bright. I really don't. And it's not a shot at Dak. I mean, God, if you put Daniel Jones on the Cowboys and Dak on the Giants, Giants are a playoff team. Absolutely. Cowboys are bad. Bad. <laughs> um, I mean, you wouldn't even have to get a great quarterback with Dable and the Giants defensive front and neighbors and their left tackle. You wouldn't need a great quarterback. You'd need Dak. You'd be a playoff team every year. The hell, Eli Manning wasn't a great regular season quarterback, but he was great. Always arrived, always healthy, always playing, two-minute drill, and good in the playoffs. So is that too negative? I just, I don't know. I, I, you know, it, Dak has over 40% of his wins on the Giants and Washington. But now that Jaden Daniels is cooking and he looks like he can really play. Now that Jaden Daniels is cooking and the Eagles are always going to have players with Harry Roseman. Uh, I think I think the days of getting fat on Washington and the Giants are over. And the Giants are going to get in their quarterback next year. And Dable's really good with quarterbacks. This was not Dable's quarterback. He wouldn't have drafted him. He's not his guy. They didn't want to give him the extension. Don't don't blame Dable for this. That's that's upstairs. That's Mara. He'll get the quarterback he wants next year. Dable knows quarterbacks. He'll have the influence. He'll have the call with Joe Shane, the GM. They'll get somebody. Cam Ward can play in the NFL. Quinn Ewers can play. Shadur can play. A little bit too much personality for me, but he can play. And back at Georgia. So that's that's four. That's four guys. And somebody will emerge over the next six to seven weeks. I, I And I know, I know it. it's easy to beat up on teams that like the New York Giants right now, but I see a lot of good pieces. With Dallas, I see a lot of big contracts <laughs> and one great player in CD Lamb. That's all I see. With so many tools and tabs and never enough time, growing a business can feel pretty overwhelming. Between your email marketing system, your payment software, your CRM, your content tools, your email tools, keeping track of everything gets out of control really fast. You end up spending more time organizing documents and data than actually connecting with prospects and customers. That's where HubSpot steps in. It's the all-in-one customer platform for growing better. With HubSpot, marketers generate better leads. Sales builds tighter relationships with customers and closes more deals. Simple as that. And service supports your customers at scale with tools like HubSpot's AI chatbot and knowledge base. Plus with built-in AI to answer common customer questions, brainstorm and write marketing content and more so your teams can say goodbye to busy work. Meaning your marketers, sales reps, and service teams actually have time to do what they were hired to do. And when they grow, the sky's the limit. Grow better, Faster with HubSpot's all-in-one customer platform. Visit HubSpot.com to get started today. Put that in. Think about this. Dak is 24-4 and four against Washington and the New York Giants. That's not going to continue. Dable's getting his quarterback next year. Washington has there. It was like Big Ben for years, eight on Cincinnati and Cleveland. Then Burrow showed up, Baker showed up, and didn't feel the same. And and so when you get that eight, nine year window with a big franchise, a Dallas or a Pittsburgh, and you have the lesser haves or the have nots in your division, and you're just dominating it for like nine years, you got to get multiple playoff wins. You got to show up in a conference championship. You got to show up in a Super Bowl. Pittsburgh did it. You know, Pittsburgh, Tomlin, they get to a couple of Super Bowls. Okay. They beat they beat in Arizona. They beat a Seattle. They got theirs. It didn't end like you'd like in Pittsburgh, but they got theirs. When Cincinnati and Cleveland were, you know, not great, didn't have star quarterbacks. Well, Washington and New York, since Eli left, have been a mess. What's Dallas have to show for it? 24 and 4. <laughs> it's just 2 and 0 every year. Nothing to show for it. They beat the New York Giants last year by 72 combined points. The Cowboys did it. Tonight, they needed a guy who can kick long field goals. So I, 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 and and Dayball's getting his guy in this draft. They're going to have a top six, seven pick, and there's four quarterbacks. And Travis Hunter's going to be one of the top guys taken. Will Johnson, that corner for Michigan, is going to be one of the top guys taken. 
So there's a tackle at Texas, probably going to be one of those guys taken. There's a defensive tackle for Kentucky is probably going to be one of those guys taken. Giants are getting a quarterback. Maybe the second choice for Dable, but they're getting somebody. College football preview presented by JLab. JLab has the best audio products in the game. They're ready to take care of you this football season. So whether you're traveling to watch your favorite team play or just streaming the game at home, find the blue box and the JLab audio products at Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and more. Just visit JLab.com. So I like USC to beat at home, beat Wisconsin soundly. It's a 15 and a half point spread. So Wisconsin's coming off a bye, but they lost their starting quarterback for the season. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke got injured against Alabama. He is out. This is a team that's the opposite of Michigan. They do not run the football. Uh, they average four yards a rush, um, and now we're with a backup quarterback. So, I mean, Luke Fickle is yet to beat a ranked team at Wisconsin. This is a work in progress. We knew the defensive line of Michigan would give USC's really talented but young O-line issues. Um, they don't present any of these problems. They don't have a dominant run game. Uh, they're good up front, not special. And USC at home, passing offense and something to prove. Um, USC did stop the run, except for about three big carries. So you say, well, Michigan averaged 6.3 yards a carry. Uh, that's not what they were averaging before that last big run. I think USC wins in LA. They win comfortably. They get their first Big Ten W. USC brings back essentially the entire offense next year outside of their center and a running back. They're young, but really talented. I think they blow the Badgers out. So I think Alabama is a two-point underdog at home against Georgia, and I like Alabama. So Georgia's banged up on the offensive line. Now, they do have 42 straight regular season wins, and, and Alabama got into one of these stretches a few years ago where they were just unbeatable in the regular season. But I don't think Georgia's playing particularly well. I watched Kentucky's defensive front push the Bulldogs around for um, long sequences in that football game. Uh, I thought Kentucky was the more physical team up front, and Georgia Ann is banged up. Um, Alabama, Kalen DeBoer, this is what he did at Washington. That offense got really good, really quickly. And right now, Bama is sixth in the country. They have an athletic quarterback, Jalen Milrow, who also throws one of the prettiest deep balls in the country. So they can run the ball. Uh, they can throw the ball and particularly deep. Uh, the quarterback is athletic. So Milrow already has 14 touchdowns this season. And in his last 13 games against ranked opponents, I think Kalen DeBoer is special. He's 12 and one. Oregon had better players. Washington had Kalen DeBoer, and they beat him three straight times. I think Alabama as a dog wins this game outright. 